So my coaching philosophy is the same as if it's a family. You're there for their betterment for their whole lives. And you are, in a way, the father. Start the clock! We played very good. We're going to play better. What a call! You got one foul. Go use it up. Taste it first. How do I know somebody didn't put something in it? Cancel the tickets. We're not even going to go. I was with the Atlanta Hawks when suddenly the opportunity came to move to the New Orleans Jazz. Never knowing was soon to become the Utah Jazz. When we started out, we couldn't win. And you can't promote a funeral. We had to use uh, little uh, shadows and mirrors and fool the people for a while. And I became the chief clown. Frank was really Mr. PR. And I know fans calling him and asking him what time the game is. And he says, well, what time can you be there? That's how bad it was. Frank Layden always made jokes about if we have a contest, first prize is one ticket, second prize is two tickets. Frank was the perfect guy with his attitude, his knowing of what it takes. He kind of laid the groundwork for everything the Jazz are doing today. Next. People always talking about how funny he was and entertaining, but he was a sound basketball coach. When I arrived and met Frank, it was immediately humorous, but also teaching lessons. People don't understand what a great teacher he was for us at the time. He knew that to keep his job, we had to win, but Frank was so good at that balancing act. He understood that there's more important things in the world. I think my greatest contribution to the organization, who the Jazz were and the step they were to take, is when I resigned. <laughs> Jerry Sloan took them to another level. You think of Utah Jazz, you think of Frank Layton. Hey, we gotta get this on camera. <laughs> but you know what? Frank Layton's on the flag, but number one is you. Number one is you. You know what's a wonderful thing? When a player comes up and hugs you and says thank you, that's worth all the money in the world.